In this presentation, we're going to record a transaction related to the contribution or donation of office space to our not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with Aplos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to jump on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're going to be on tab one. So I'm on tab one here. And, and number one says it's going to be office space donated. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky transaction for the first transaction here. We got a contribution, but that contribution isn't cash, which would be the normal type of contribution. What was contributed instead? The use of the facilities, the use of office space. Now, here then, that means there's still a contribution. It's a non-cash contribution. We got something of value. Therefore, we're still going to want to increase the income account. That's going to be the revenue account on from a journal entry standpoint. The 35800 is going to be increasing with a credit, if you think about debits and credits, the contributions. The other side then, not going to cash, but is actually an expense. So what's this going to look like in the, in the end? This is what we want basically the accounts to look like from a financial accounting uh, standpoint. We want the revenue to be going up. So we have zero revenue now. It's going to be going up. And then instead of cash going up with a normal contributions, we have rent. We have basically rent expense is going up. So the rent then should be going up. There's going to be no effect then on the net income. So the net income or the, the change in the debits and credits or the, or the change in net assets will not be uh, affected here. But we want to record the two line items on the income statement. Revenue went up and basically the expense went up. Revenue went up by the amount of the contribution, which we would have to determine using some kind of market method typically to see what the uh, cost of a normal renting of the facilities would be. And then the expense went up for the equivalent amount because that's going to be us consuming it with the use of the facilities. We're using the facilities, we're using the space, and therefore we have an expense related to it as well. So that's going to be the transaction we're looking for over here. Now, note we also from, from a accounting standpoint or from a not-for-profit standpoint want to be able to be tracking who gave us the contribution so that we can track that information and be able to provide them the reporting of that contribution uh, in the future so that's another critical component for the not-for-profit to have that information to be tracked so if we then go back into our not-for-profit we're currently in the dashboard we're going to go over to the donations so you'll recall within the donations that we have set up our purposes over here and we only have the one purpose right now which is the general purpose which is going to go that's going to be like our driving component uh, to enter our, our data input form now we're going to enter the data input form with a contribution so i'm going to enter the contribution so contribution drop down and then contribution and then i'm simply going to add a contribution here so i'm going to say add a contribution so we will then add this and then we're going to have a con a uh, contact now i'm going to set up a new contact as we go we don't so i'm going to type in the donor name here i'm just going to say donor one so that's going to be our generic name so that's going to be the name of our donor and then it says down here we're going to add a new contact so we're going to do that quickly we're just going to do a quick add of the information for our new contact now note, of course, you might want to enter the more information into the contacts setting so you could put more information than simply the contact name. But we're just going to be using the contact name here. That's going to be the minimal information necessary to enter the uh, add, add a contribution type form. Now, the purpose is going to be uh, similar to the item for a for-profit type of organization. So we set up the purpose. That's going to be that driving factor that's going to be telling us what account it's going to be going to and the fund that it's going to be going to. And if we had any tags, also the tags. Now the acknowledgement, we could say, hey, have we acknowledged this or not, the actual contribution or not? So we could say acknowledged or not acknowledged to be able to track whether or not we have acknowledged the contribution. The contribution date, I'm going to put on January 1st for our practice problem. So I'm going to be picking uh, January. So I went back here with the back arrow January 1st. So we'll pick that. And then the amount of the contribution I'm going to say is that 35800. And that's going to be the amount of our contribution. That's the value of the rent that we had. Okay. And then we're going to go back on over. And then I'm not going to have any reference ID. Now the note, this might we might want to put here. This was uh, rent. Uh, pro uh, property donated something like that we want to have some kind of uh, note here that we will have now the expense amount I'm actually going to put the expense amount here which in this case I'm going to say is the full amount 
And when we, when we pull this over to the accounting records, what we would like to do then is apply this expense account over to the rent expense. So you'll see what's happening from an accounting standpoint. Usually the contribution form will be increasing cash. The other side going to uh, the revenue account, which is going to be driven by this item. But what we would like to have is the cash not going up, but rather uh, we have the expense going up and then the other side being income going up. So the income is going to be going up driven by the general form. And then, of course, we're going to try to put the expense with the expense amount here. So then we have the non-tax deductible amount. Nothing there. Uh, we're going to say we're going to keep it there for for our purposes. Non-tax deductible note. You can have a note and then soft credit uh, contact. So we're not going to put anything there. So that's going to be it. So I'm going to say save and add or save and close. I'm going to say save and close. Now, there's actually no effect on the financial statements yet until we make the deposit. So let's just check that out so we can see this. Now, a nice feature in any online uh, process or any online software is typically that you can have multiple tabs open. To do that, I'm going to go up to the tab to the top, right click on it. I'm going to duplicate the tab, duplicate the tab. So now I would uh, usually have the reports to the right so that I can see what is happening to the reports as we go. So once that tab is open, I'm going to go to the reports on the right hand side. And then I'm going to open up our standard two reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. So I'm going to go into the balance sheet and say, open that one up. So here is the balance sheet. We could change the date. I'm really looking at uh, the end of January 2020. So I'll pick that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, and you'll see down here, nothing's in the balance sheet. So nothing's been recorded on our books yet. And we can do the same thing for the income statement. I'm going to go back up top, right click on this tab, duplicate it. And then I want to take a look at the income statement by going to the reports tab and then opening up our other favorite report, that being the income statement report. So I'm going to open up the income statement. All right. And then nothing is here thus far as well. So I'm going to say custom date range and let's bring this on back to the January, uh, we'll say the January 31st here as well. And let's try that one more time. We're going to say this is January 1st to January 31st. So we'll pick this back to January 31st. All right, and then apply that and we have uh, nothing thus far. So then I'm going to go back to the first tab. Now let's go back to the first tab. We're going to make uh, the deposit. Now note there's not going to be a deposit here because we're basically we want a, a transaction to an expense, but we can expense the whole thing in this process. So this is a really neat feature that we can do this here. We're going to go in and say I'm going to make the deposit and then I want to create the deposit. Again, it's not going to be a deposit here because it, we expense the entire thing. But then we see our line items, so our line item date. Uh, 1 1 2020. I'm going to keep that the same. I'm not going to have a reference ID. The note is here. The uh, donor, donor one, and then the purpose, general purpose, and then the amount being that uh, 35,008. So notice we have the, the same kind of fields are populated in here, of course. And then the expense account, the expense amount now being that 35,800. So that's going to be important. And so we have the, the same kind of data input fields. Now, note to be a little bit faster also uh, you could we could have gone directly to the deposit field and you can enter multiple line items in this way and enter it a little bit faster by going directly into these line items rather than going to the contribution field and then over here uh, also note that when you do the actual deposit into the bank you want to be able to group if this isn't a deposit into the bank but typically when you use a field like this it's going to go into the bank you want to be able to group those deposits in such a way that uh It'll be in the bank in the same way uh, as in your book. So when you do the bank reconciliation, that shall, will work out. So we'll talk more about that later. But in any case, if we scroll down, we're going to choose our account. Now, now it's going to go into this expense account. So if I hit the expense account drop down, we have this rent. So the rent is going to be the other side that's going to be affected. And then you could choose a bank account, but nothing should be going into the bank account at this point in time. So we shouldn't have anything going into the bank account. However, I'll select the uh, checking account for this point. So what's going to happen when we record this then? It's going to be increasing the rent expense by the amount of the expense to 35800 And then the other side is going to be going to the income by the 35800 driven by this general purpose item, which is kind of like the item for a for-profit type of organization. And we should be able to sort that report by the fund. So let's save it and check it out. So I'm going to say save. And there we have it. 
Note that kind of jumps us over to the deposit screen, which if you hit the contributions drop down, you have contributions and then deposits. So these two are kind of related in that way. Now you can go back into the deposit screen by clicking on it, which I do need to do here because I got the wrong date. So this is the deposit date. I'd like to bring that back to January. So this is how easy it is to fix it or adjust it. You can go into it. We can go back up top and I want to change the date field up top to be uh, January 1st as well. So note down here, this is the date of the contribution. This is the date of the deposit. Those don't necessarily be the same. You would think they'd be fairly close here because we want to, you know, we don't want to be holding on to the cash, but we're going to say save. And so there we have it. There's our deposit. I'm going to jump over to the income statement now. I'm going to refresh the screen uh, by hitting this little button up top to refresh it. Or you can click on the URL highlighting it and then hit enter and it'll refresh the screen. So now we have our information. We've got the income went up by that uh, 35,800 and the rent went up as well. So the net is uh, zero. So net, no net effect on the balance sheet. If we go back to the balance sheet and we refresh the screen over here as well, then uh, we have nothing on, I mean, we have nothing on the balance sheet at this point in time because the income statement went up and then down, no effect on the balance sheet. Okay, let's go back to the first tab now and I'm going to make another report. I'm going to go to the first tab. I'm going to right click on it and we're going to duplicate this tab. So I'm going to duplicate that tab. So we've got our balance sheet, and our income statement. And now I'm going to look at another type of income statement. So we're going to go to the reports to the right as on uh, the reports to the right. We want to consider another income statement. This is one we'll probably uh, start using more, maybe even more than the standard income statement. And that's going to be the income statement by funds. We want to see the income statement by fund. Note it's useful down here. Here it is down in the most uh, used reports. I'm going to hit a star next to it and that's going to put it up top in the favorites. So that's one we're going to be using a lot. So I would put a star on it. So you got your recents, which will show up as recent items. And then I would put your favorites up top. So if we look at the income statement by fund then, so we have the income statement by fund, changing the date. I'm going to make the date a custom, let's make it uh, this year to date. That'll show the data. So there we have it. Now we have this broken out between the restricted and unrestricted, or and uh, obviously this is in the unrestricted. So you can see now this income statement starting to populate in this format with, with the use of um, those funds. So now we have it broken out in, in kind of like uh, the statement of activities here where we would have the two columns here it is down here with donor restrictions and without donor restriction unrestricted and restricted so as we go we'll see how that will be broken out between uh, those two categories let's take about a look at one more report let's just go back into this report let's go to the reports again so i'm going to go to the reports drop down and we also want to track the donations that have been given to us so then we could say, okay, what about the donor report? So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll down here and we've got uh, the other reports and then the donation reports down here. So we have the donation by contact. That's probably our most common report. I'd probably put that on the star as well because uh, that'll be our information of the, the donations that have been given to that to us. If we open that up, then have our date range. I'm going to say that we want this year to date as well. So that looks good. So now we're breaking out that information by who gave us the money. So this report can help us with basically our reporting to the donors who gave us uh, the money. Now, in this case, it wasn't money, but uh, we still have the donation in this report. So that's what we that's what we want to see. Now, also note, we set this donor up fairly quickly. If we went back to the first tab and we were going to track that information, we can also see it here where we go to uh, the people tab. We're going to go to the people, which is going to in in include the donors and uh, the the vendors. We're going to go to then to the contact list. So the contact list. So here's our contact list. And we see down here by name, here's our donor. So if we wanted to add more detail here, or we could just basically add uh, more of our donors here with the, the plus button. And if we go into the donor that we have added, we can give more uh, information about them. So we can edit the details, edit the details of the donor. And we've got standard kind of contact information, first name, last name, uh, the company, the title. And then we have multiple phone numbers and all the contact information, which of course we want to have. We want them on our newsletter and whatnot, the address, the events, custom fields, and so on and so forth. So the, the standard kind of things that you could that you would have available to you to populate uh, the, the, the contact type of information field. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.